RPG a day, 2017, day 7, Monday, August the 7th. Today's question is, what is your most impactful RPG session? Hmm, let me think. I'd like to think that I have an impact on most of the games I play. I like to play characters that are multi-dimensional, with as many flaws as they have strengths. I like to bring a lot of energy and really influence the outcomes of said game. Whether that be for the positive, for the negative, or for the betterment of the game, or for the failure of the game. That's not really me to decide, is it? Now, let's just throw this out here. I'm going to give props to the, let's see, Star Wars system. Edge of the Empire, right there. That game makes Abbott Impact very easy for most players, mostly because of the narrative dice system. Those triumphs and despairs that you can roll on those beautiful red and yellow dice, wow, they can really change the effect of the game. Give you a quick synopsis of one character, Azer Thule, and his triumphs that really aided his party. So picture this, Azer Thule and his other members of his group, the Merchants of Death, go to Zorba the Hutt's pleasure planet. They go there to obtain this Xenos technology. This something beyond the other rim that Tapani Starship Enterprises, the company we work for, has paid us handsomely to go and obtain during this auction. Other big players are here as well. All the big Starship manufacturers of the Empire. Zahn himself is here. Everyone's interested in this Xenos tech. We have made many enemies already. The Empire is there. They've sent agents to collect Kor Thalathine, the captain of our crew. He's run some blockade in the past. Now his obligation is what triggered this character being here on session, I think it's session three. But Kor outwits her, this agent of the Empire. And in doing so, I obtain her data pad. I break the data pad, being the slicer, the mechanic, the technician character. I roll two triumphs. SR2 Joker, great, great storyteller, and myself come together to determine what these triumphs are going to be. She's an agent seeking outlaws. So what better thing to be on this data pad than a list of criminals? A throwaway triumph. Good information to have, but not something that was particularly interesting or useful in that moment. But I locked it away. A month and a half later, three episodes, we've gotten in much more trouble with many more characters and many more criminal outfits. Everyone wants us dead at this point. We've hired assassins. We've been attacked by assassins. We're in a meeting with Zorba the Hutt. Our face character, Rala, to grew to performer, is trying our hardest to outwit this uh, very difficult negotiator in Zorba. If you've seen the hot stat blocks in the uh, either of the core books, you'll know that their negotiation skills and their attributes that power them are very, very high. We're still relatively... We're not night level characters by any means at this point. So Rala's struggling. She fails, gets some despairs, pisses off Zorba. Zorba's going to feed her to her beast. We're not going to get this Xenotech. We've been here, we've been shot at, we've been bruised, we've been battered, we've been poisoned. And we're not going to get what we came for. Then it came to me. Zorba's a criminal. Zorba has criminals on her payroll. Some of these criminals must have criminal records. I am a slicer. I have a list of criminals. Some of which might be Zorba's. How about I expunge those criminal records? How about I free up Zorba's people to work more freely throughout the Empire, even here in the Outer Rim? I used that triumph in that moment. It wasn't pre-planned. I hadn't given it a thought, but my gears were grinding. I was like, man, we are up the creek without a paddle. Andrew, the, the Game Master, SR2 Joker, is putting the gears to us. And then it dawned on me. I had supplanted that information from that data pad in our DX, our, our uh, bodyguard 
character played by Austin. I put that information in there just for safekeeping some time ago. So I accessed, accessed the information from DX and I sold it to Zorba, freeing up Rala from being fed to the beast and giving us the upper hand in the auction. The funny thing is, there was such a build up to that moment. Now it kinda, it kinda also stole some of the thunder from, from Nick's face character, which made me feel kinda bad. But, cause they were like compiling dice, yeah? They were like putting boost dice in there and, and black dice in there for setbacks and just coming up with the numbers. And it was just this big skew of positives, advantages and negatives all going into play. And right when they were about to roll the die is when Isatu spoke up and brought up his his uh, idea to Zorba, which completely changed the playing field and was able to uh, help us win the day and win the auction and get the item we went there for. So ingenuity on my part, but. I can't take much of the credit. I have to give the credit to the system that allowed me to have that moment to shine. Uh, not from anything else, but just because of something that had happened like two months prior. And it was those triumphs from two months prior that made me uh, save the day in that moment when it looked like everything was lost. So, cheers. That was a very memorable moment for me and for everyone else that was playing in that game. Um, I know we did some podcasts where we, we chatted about the game afterwards. And that brought, that got brought up several times. It was a, it was a star moment for sure. It was a moment that changed our futures in that game. And uh, it's one I'm quite proud of and happy to share with you today. Cheers.